Question. How do we know that the Bible we have today is truly God's Word? Most Christians would have a Bible, at least one Bible, and Christians would say that the Bible is the only source of truth, and it is God's Word. Well, how do we know that? And we know for a fact that the Bible consists of 66 books. 39 of the books were in the Old Testament, and 27 of them in the New Testament. Together they make the 66 books that combines into what we call today the Bible. There might be perhaps a follow-up question that suggests um, who decided which books to be part of the Bible and were there any God-inspired books that were overlooked? And how do we know we have all the writings that were inspired by God? I mean, those are legitimate questions. Let's explore this a little bit further. Well, the 66 books that are in the Bible, that is accepted in the Bible as God's inspired word, were referred to as the canon of scriptures. It took some time to recognize which writings were God-inspired indeed, and determining the, whether the writings were God-inspired was not a specific event, as most people would think, but it's rather a process over time. It took time to recognize which writings were really God-inspired. And through this process, our current Bible, um, if you like the scripture that's included in the canon, uh, is developed. The canon, in a sense, um, in, in other words, is really a very high standard or measuring, measuring tool needed to deem a writing that is inspired by God. So it is a standard. As I said just now, contrary to what most modern critics would say, early Jewish and church leaders did not create the canon. In other words, the canon was not established by a group of religious leaders that just simply sit down and just decide in their own mind what is an inspired book. Rather, the process was a, a process was, was adopted by these leaders and all they needed to do was to recognize or discover which books were God-inspired, if you like, or you can call it God-breathed in it, from the very inception. That is to say, a writing was not given the authority of being scripture because the early Jewish or Christian leaders accepted it as such, it is to say that it was accepted by the leaders and the people because it was clear to them that God himself had written the writing uh, with his, in its divine authority. So we've got to get this very clear. It is, there is a fine line between what I just talked about. And it was a process they used. They used guiding principles to recognize that it was a God-inspired book in the first place. And let's have a look at what those guiding principles were. And with these guiding principles uh, or rules, that these rules will qualify a letter or a book to be recognized as a divinely inspired writing. And these are the four guiding principles. Number one, the writing was authored by a prophet or an apostle of God or someone connected with them. Number two, the message of the book was consistent with what had already been revealed by God. Number three, the writing clearly evidenced the confirming presence of God. And this is very important. And lastly, number four, the book was widely accepted by the church from an early date. So these are the four guiding principles. The earliest recognized book was, of course, the Old Testament. And um, all 39 of books of the Old Testament were by at least 300 BC uh, was all recognized as part of the canonical books. I mean, if you look at 
the Old Testament, the Old Testament could not be well, could not have any any higher authority given to it than that of Jesus Himself. Jesus repeatedly quoted and taught from the Old Testament. In Luke, chapter twenty four. Verse forty four. I quote, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, which is the five books, and the prophets, which are the eight books, and the Psalms, which included in the eleven writings, must be fulfilled. Close quote. And as if there was not enough, Jesus made reference to this uh, in the Old Testament um, about the first and the last martyrs. Within the text, when he said, "This is in Luke chapter eleven, verse fifty-one," I quote, "From the murder of Abel, which is in Genesis, to the murder of Zechariah." Unquote. Jesus was referring to the entire Old Testament here. So, Jesus then clearly confirmed the authority and the inspiration of the Hebrew canon, if you like, the Old Testament. And for the New Testament, by the by two hundred and about three hundred eighty, the church leaders themselves has already began to recognize、um, the authenticity of the New Testament books, which were written by the apostles and inspired by God. And by AD three hundred and sixty seven, Athanasius of Alexandria provided the first official list of the twenty seven books of the New Testament. That we have today, and the twenty-seven books were canonized、uh, or listed officially by the Council of Council of Hippo in AD three hundred and thirty-nine, and the Council of Carthage in three hundred and ninety-seven. And people like Paul, who wrote the epistles, were immediately recognized by the early church fathers as inspired by God, simply because Paul was an apostle, and even Peter himself recognized this. And indicated in Second Peter th- v- chapter three, verse fifteen to sixteen, c- that he considered the letters of Paul to belong in the category of being scripture. Both Paul and Peter, as we know, are the were the apostles of Jesus.、Um, I mean, the early church fathers by the first and second century,、uh, b- people like Clement of Alexandria, Ignatius, and Polycarp, also recognized the authorities of the writing. That comprises our New Testament as being inspired by God. So, in summary, what we're saying is the Bible, comprised of the sixty-six books, were canonized around this three hundred to four hundred A.D. for the New Testament, and indeed for the Old Testament, it was officially recognized by Jesus Himself. So, the sixty-six books, in summary, of the Bible. Is really a God-inspired volume of books that were recognized and accepted in this process called canonization by about 400 A.D. That's how we know that the Bible that we have today is truly God's word. <music>